Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, September 26, 2021. I am Reverend Mary Tillman and I will be your presenter for today's lesson. Our fall quarter study is Celebrating God. We're in Unit 1 and that title is God's People Offer Praise. Today's lesson is lesson number 4, the last lesson in this unit, God's People Offer Praise. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is Believers Praise God. And our Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is Celebrating in Unity. Our devotional reading, Psalm 134. It's a great psalm. Please be sure you read that. Our background scripture is Acts, the second chapter, verses 32 through 33 and verses 37 through 47. And our printed passage, the text is the same. Acts, the second chapter, verses 32 and 33, and verses 37 through 47. But I encourage you to read the whole chapter, the second chapter of Acts, to get a feeling of what was going on. Our key verse in our lesson today is the 42nd verse of the second chapter of the book of Acts. From the NIV Bible, it reads, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your word. Please open our understanding so that we may willingly praise you in unity with a committed spirit of love and fellowship, and then practice your teachings in our daily lives. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful lesson talking about unity and harmony in our church. In our lesson introduction for today, as I stated, this is our last lesson in Unit 1, God's People Offer Praise. These lessons on praising God should inspire us to be loud with our praise and not be ashamed to let the world know what God has done for us. We praise God for who he is and not for what he can do. We all have a testimony and need to tell others who are going through life aimlessly, not knowing who Jesus is. It's time for all of the saints of God to unite and proclaim God's goodness in a loud, jubilant praise. Psalm 150 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I'm getting happy all by myself just thinking about it. We need to praise the Lord at all times. I read a book once that says there are only two times we should praise God. One, when we feel like it, and two, when we don't feel like it. Why? Because God is worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And I'm here to let you know right now that all of us are behind in our praise. So we can't praise God enough. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise him enough. So let us learn to be loud with our praise and not ashamed. We belong to the noisy crowd. And if you have not joined, I extend to you an invitation to become a part of the noisy crowd with me. So get your Sunday school book, your Bible, your pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this lesson. Let's get started. In our lesson background and introduction, Acts, the second chapter, verses 43 through 47, is one of the most comprehensive portraits of the communal life of the early Christian church. In these verses, we see a church on the move, living, thriving, and growing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Luke, the writer, outlines the reasons why the early Christian church was so strong, vibrant, and unified. We'll get to this more in detail when we read the lesson's text. The unity of the early church begins in Acts, the first chapter. Verse 14 notes that prior to Pentecost, they were of one mind and they continually devoted themselves to prayer. Congregational unity and togetherness are an indispensable necessity in the church. No congregation can grow, either numerically or spiritually, without unity. And one of the most overlooked lessons in the book of Acts is how the Holy Spirit took people from many different racial, ethnic, social, economic, and political backgrounds and molded them into a single unified gathering of disciples. 
please note this. God does not bless disunity. Disunity occurs when problems remain unsolved until they fester and become bitterness and malice. Congregations should celebrate the unity that binds them together and see it as one of God's great gifts. There are three questions for you to consider in today's lesson. Number one, what was Peter's message to the crowd on the day of Pentecost? Question number two, what was the promise the people received when they repented and were baptized? And question number three, what was so significant about the early church? Let's look at today's lesson's biblical context. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, they were in one place with one accord. They were praying and fellowshipping and waiting. In the Christian tradition, Pentecost is the day when the Holy Spirit came into the world, fulfilling the promise of Jesus to his disciples for divine power to be his witnesses. During this period, the apostles received irrefutable evidence that Jesus had been raised from the dead and was alive. During the period between the resurrection and the ascension, Jesus prepared the apostles for their mission in the world. There were not many days between Jesus' ascension and the actual day of Pentecost. According to Acts 2 and 1, when the celebration of Pentecost had fully come, there came a mighty rushing wind from heaven, and it filled the house where they had gathered, and there appeared to each of them tongues of fire, after which they began to speak the word of God with boldness. And we'll see that in Acts the second chapter, verses 1 through 4. Pentecost is the birthday of the Christian church. It is the day that Jesus' dynamic strategy to conquer the world shifted into overdrive. Jesus appeared to his disciples for a period of 40 days after the resurrection, teaching, encouraging, and preparing them for the great work of the kingdom building. And we see that in Acts, the first chapter, verse number three. Kingdom building is evangelism. Every born a grand believer is assigned to evangelize the unsaved. Pentecost literally means 50. This was a time of great rejoicing before the Lord. Pentecost celebrated the results of the actual harvest. It was appropriate to gather for the purpose of remembering God as the source of their supply. It was also a time when people would bring abundant free will offerings. This week's lesson's aims are, as a result of experiencing this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Understand Jesus' forgiveness of sins and the role of the Holy Spirit in your lives and in the life of the church. Two, discern how the love of Jesus and the gift of the Holy Spirit inspire believers of different backgrounds to share a life of worship, care, and witness. And three, plan opportunities for persons to encounter the Holy Spirit and begin a relationship with Jesus Christ through the ministries of your church. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is the pricking, and we'll find that in Acts chapter 2, verses 32 through 33 and verses 37 and 38. The second outline is the promise. And we'll find that in Acts chapter 2, verses 39 through 42. And the third outline is the praise. Acts, the second chapter, verses 43 through 47. And those three outlines encompasses our printed passage. So we have the pricking, the promise, the praise. Let's look at outline number one, the pricking. 
Acts chapter 2, verses 32 and 33, and verses 37 and 38. From the NIV Bible, it reads, God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Verse 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Key point number one, Peter declared the central truth of the Christian gospel that Jesus was raised from the dead. Peter elaborated on the resurrection of Jesus and subsequent events by explaining that Jesus is now seated at the right hand of God as the promised Messiah. As Peter spoke with power and authority, the people's hearts were pricked and they wanted to know what they must do to resolve this grave sin they committed against God. Peter instructed them to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you see that in verse 38. Let's read that verse again from the NIV Bible. Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Here we see an action on the part of the people and we also see the blessing of the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Key point number two. Peter appeals to the crowd to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because Acts 4 and 12 tells us, There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The word repent means to turn. It is having a change of mind and or feeling remorse. The call to repent was an element of the preaching of Jesus and John the Baptist. Read Mark 1 verses 14 and 15. In other words, to repent is to see yourself as God does and to turn away from sin. Repentance is a feeling of genuine anguish and grief over the life that you've lived without Christ. It is a complete changing of the mind concerning who one is and how he or she has lived. Baptized is a washing or a purification. Peter's call to repent was an individual decision. He said, every one of you, no one can repent for anyone but himself. The appeal to the crowd to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ distinguishes it from the baptism of John. This water baptism is symbolic of the inward change that has taken place in a person's life. Baptism alone does not save. It represents to the world that a person has made a definitive break from his or her past and decided to embrace God's gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. This is why we sing the song, I've decided to make Jesus my choice. It's a personal decision. Mama can't do it. Daddy can't do it. We must do this of our own volition. And there is another song that came to mind and said, if I don't make it to heaven, it's nobody's fault but mine. Because this is a personal decision that each of us has to make if we want to be a Christian or not. Outline number two, the promise. Acts, the second chapter, verses 39 through 42. And let's read those verses. And it says from our lesson text, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Key point number one.
Peter further explained the promise of the Holy Spirit, which they would receive in verse 39. The promise is available to everyone who receives it. Believers receive the Holy Spirit when they are saved by faith. The door is open to whosoever will, let them come. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 were moved and touched by what they had heard. They responded to the invitation to receive this promise of God. The promise Peter spoke of is sure and certain, backed by the very person and word of God. This is why we preach and teach the Holy Scriptures. Romans 10, 12 through 15 from the NIV Bible says, For there is no difference between the Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So you see here, my brothers and sisters, we have to hear the word, to believe the word, to accept the word. Key point number two, Peter pleaded with his listeners to accept the gospel message and 3,000 of them gladly received the preached word of God. The new converts were of many diverse nationalities. Verse 42 says the new converts formed a community that came together to receive and study God's word and to unite in fellowship, eating and praying together. The believers were committed to learning about Jesus Christ. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They were committed to being together to fellowship and break bread together. And they were committed to praying together. Prayer was and is one of the most spiritual, powerful tools that we have. The most powerful tool we have as Christians is prayer. The Bible tells us we should always pray In both good times and bad times, prayer is always in order. And guess what? Prayer is necessary. It is our pipeline of communication with God the Father. Outline number three, the praise. Acts chapter 2 verses 43 through 47. And the scripture text reads, Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Key point number one, the early Christians came together to share their possessions so that everyone's needs were met. In verse 43, there are three words that set the tone for the life of the church in Jerusalem, all wonders and signs. These were the authenticators that God was at work in the life of the church. The Lord will always bear witness to his presence in the community. When we are together, when there is unity, there is an internal impact that is felt within the church community. And key point number two, the early Christian church grew. They met daily at the temple to worship. They broke bread together daily with a spirit-led gladness and sincerity in the atmosphere of praise and worship. In summary, A congregation that follows the example and pattern of the early church has the potential to be a very powerful spiritual force for social and spiritual change. Wonderful things happen when Christians come together in Christian love and unity. For some people, spiritual change is instantaneous. It bears witness and confounds those who believed it was not possible for a person to change. But for others... 
It does not happen as quickly, whether sooner or later. Every believer will experience a change. This change begins with repenting, being baptized, receiving the forgiveness of sin, and embracing the gift of the Holy Spirit. It continues with hearing the word of God, receiving it, and responding to it daily. Well, brothers and sisters, that's our lesson for today. This lesson is a great tool. Why don't we use Peter's plea to those we know, and as we evangelize in our community, expect results, for truly our job is to evangelize those that are lost. And in all that we do, give God praise. Remember Psalms 150 says, Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this lesson on being in unity with our brothers and sisters. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. May we rejoice in the warm glow of your presence. Grant that we may serve and witness with boldness and in all things give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.